Perfectly still. Mike, I want to take some calls in the couple segments we've got left with you. But just briefly going back to the flu. I mean, we know it's a fraud. We know it's a moneymaker. We know the UN's using it as a way to test global government. They bragged and said that the whole world under UN command on the flu uh, response to the level six that they issue when it's not even really a level six with the number of cases or deaths. What do you think the overall motive? I mean, was it just profit and power grab? Or do you think in your spidey sense they're planning to really go wild with this and, and, and really release something more deadly? Or do they know the nasal spray live virus is going to mutate? They say they know it is, but do they know it's going to mutate into something really bad? I mean, there are a bunch of eugenicists that say they want to kill us. Could this be their global crisis, 100 million people dead? Well, I think they're definitely trying to create a global crisis in order to justify the, the bringing on of global government. They wanted to do that with global warming, human-caused global warming, the idea being that if there was a global environmental crisis, it had to have a global controlling authority. That one fell flat on its face because the Earth is actually getting cooler, and the, science, uh, the scientific underpinnings of human-caused global warming have basically all been destroyed over the last couple of years. So, okay, global warming isn't going to work. Let's come up with a new crisis. It's the Hegelian dialect all over again. They're looking to create a global crisis of some kind that will justify or at least sell to the people of the world the necessity for a global government, whether it's a global economic crash, a global flu pandemic, global warming, aliens invading, whatever they think is going to work, that's what they're going to do. By the way, that's itself. declassified, as you just said, Project Bluebeam. They don't declassify the details, but they admit they've got a fake alien landing project to unify humanity with big hologram machines if they have to. Uh, but absolutely, they need a global crisis to offer their global solution. Their latest fear-mongering, I'm sure you saw from the U.N., is carbon dioxide is going to make the ocean turn into acid. Yes. Well, technically, it's already acid because it's carbonic acid, which is the same thing you have in, in mineral water. And uh, so, again, they're taking a minor scientific truth and they're blowing it up to be this big, scary threat. But the bottom line is that the Earth is always changing, the climate is always changing, the chemistry is always changing. It never stays the same. This idea that if there's a global government that we will lock the Earth in this particular configuration at some arbitrary definition of what is ideal is absolutely nonsense. It is artificial. Exactly. Let me throw this at you. I watch uh, on HBO, Bill Maher's show sometimes, because they, they rear it all the time. Every show, he shows the wildfires in L.A. and says, this is global warming, when they've always had wildfires in L.A. And now I've talked to the police out there, and it's on their news, crazy arsonists go and set fires everywhere, and they have overbuilt out there, uh, and you've got people setting fires. And then he showed a dust storm in Australia and said it was the end of the world. They've always had dust storms uh, out of the interior of Australia. I mean, these guys will take a tornado, a tsunami, an earthquake. They're worse than Pat Robertson. You know, they, I mean, they really are. Anything that happens, blame it on the villain that we're trying to sell you the solution to. And it's absolutely correct. Uh, and the bottom line, though, is that the Earth is actually cooling and it, it's being driven by the sun. The actual forces involved in controlling the temperature of the Earth are so far beyond the capabilities of humans to deal with or adjust or influence. It's just another excuse to sell us another governmental control, to sell us another tax, to take more money from us, to control our lives. Yeah. even more leave us alone that's the message from the people of planet earth to the globalists leave us alone go go conquer mars if you want to rule a planet go bother them leave us alone <laughs> well you know the thing is i know 300 earths will fit in jupiter google the term how many earths will fit in the sun you got this giant fireball i think it's several thousand you've got this giant fireball that heat burns your skin if you're out in it too much, and they're saying, oh, that has nothing to do. The U.N. officially says nothing to do with the climate. Yeah. yeah. I know you can fit 3,000 Earths in Jupiter, so we looked up the number. It's 1,206,885 Earths will fit inside the sun. It's a gigantic hydrogen thermal nuclear explosion fireball. It shoots off. Sunspot eruptions, thousands of times the size of the Earth every day. If you're out there and and just the radiation of a solar flare will hit you, it'll fry you in your spacesuit, deader than a hammer. And they get on the news 
and I've got it in the official UN documents, and they say the sun has nothing to do with the climate. And they also tell you polar bears can't swim and show them out on ice floes where they hunt for seals. Folks, they, they treat you like you're your complete moron, okay? There's nothing we can do to affect climate change like the sun. Carbon dioxide. Mike, have you been seeing the ads on TV saying, watch out, carbon dioxide's deadly poison? I mean, how oh. dumb do they think the public is? Well, they apparently think the public are very, very dumb. And, and the bottom line is that right now the sun is showing hardly any sunspots at all, which means it's actually cooler than normal. And one thing that we have discovered from all these spacecraft that we've sent to other planets, like we sent Viking to Mars back in 1976, and we've had all these spacecraft out there, and we have documented many, many times that the other planets are heating up and cooling down exactly the same time as Earth is in the same amounts. And it's obviously the only common factor is the solar radiation here. Now, we already know that when Al Gore did his famous little graph showing Earth's temperature related to carbon dioxide, that he actually got them backward, that the Earth's temperature went up first, then there was more carbon dioxide, because warmer water was giving up its carbon dioxide for the same reason that warm soda pop does, and as the Earth got warmer, there was more life, life produced more carbon dioxide. So the linkage is actually the reverse. Now, let me stop Al you Gore for people that don't know. He knowingly, because all the ice cores, all the climatologists, it's on record that carbon dioxide, because the uh, H2O is part CO2, it, when the earth heats up, then more carbon dioxide comes out, then that accelerates plant life, more oxygen, that's a blooming for the earth. It's very hard on the earth when it's cold for overall biomass. They knew all of that and just lied about it. Uh, and it's just like you leave a Coca-Cola in a can in your hot car, it's going to explode because the CO2 rises in the heat. Al Gore knows that. He didn't invent the Internet. He told you NAFTA and GATT were going to be great. They weren't, were they, Mike? No, they absolutely weren't. And just to show you how much, the reason why I think this global warming hype was linked to the push for a global government is, look, they gave him the Nobel Peace Prize. They gave him all these film awards to say what a wonderful documentary it was. It's a hard sell, hard sell, hard sell to sell you the lie that you are to blame for the reason the planet is, is getting worse. And therefore, you must submit to global control and global taxation in order to atone for your sins. That's what the agenda was there. And since that's not working out and people aren't falling for the global warming anymore, they're switching over to the swine flu and global financial crisis. The goal is a global government, and they're going to use any excuse they can come up with. But how can they say if the sun is obviously the source of most heat on this planet, there's some that comes out of the tectonic plates, the thermal uh, from the volcanic activity in the core of the earth, uh, you know, up into the uh, mantle and the crust, but, I mean, it's just so asinine to say polar bears can't swim and the sun isn't hating us. I mean, and it's like when I had Rothschild on, I said, the big head environmental land grabber, and I said, but Jupiter and Saturn's moons are melting. Uh, the ice caps of Mars are melting. This was three years ago. Now they're getting bigger. And he just said, well, that's because Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars are closer to the sun than the Earth. And I said, no, it's Mercury and then Venus and then Earth. He said, no, no, they're closer. And he just laughed because he knows the, he thinks the general audience is like, my audience is like the general public. He thought if he just acted confident and said that Saturn was the closest to the sun, people believe it. Well, like I said, these, these guys grew up in the height of the Cold War where they could lie to the public with impunity and there was no blogosphere or alternative radio to challenge them. Mike, uh, let me talk to you here in the break. We've got uh, the Camp FEMA folks coming up. Mike Rivera, WhatWeHappen.com. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. The new film is pre-sale right now. It ships out on or before the Have 21st.